Let's look at verse number uh, 28, uh, Matthew 11. And uh, I don't know how much of this I'll get done tonight, but we're going to think about some things tonight, okay? Come unto me, Jesus said. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. That labor and are heavy laden. Anybody get that? That are heavy. I mean, listen, it is labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you what? You believe that? I believe that. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Heavenly Father, bless the lesson to the hearts of the people, and into my heart. I need for you to bless my heart tonight. I need rest unto my soul. I pray that the people here would pray the same prayer. Lord, give me rest where we need it the most. We're heavy laden. We're burdened. We need help that only you can give. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, here is Christmas time. A burden somewhat within itself for most people. Now, Christians, if they'll celebrate Christmas the way they should celebrate it, there's no burden there. But most people in this country, they think they got to get everybody a gift. And uh, look, you guys don't have to get everybody a gift. Me, you do, but get everybody else. <laughs> just kidding. Just, 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 get, just, just joking. <laughs> You, you know, but, but when it becomes a burden, it takes away your Christmas. Don't you agree? Uh, now you got you have people that have real burdens. You got just just the fact that you got to get out and do this, and got to think about this, got to think about that. You got to go to this meeting, got this dinner, that dinner, this meeting, things like that. You got then you have, you take Rebecca back there. Her husband is involved in an accident. Here it is Christmas time. Now she has to take work off. She has to take care of a husband that's not well anyway. Now he's really not well. He's had fixed bones in his back that were broken. Um, neck up here. Be fused. Crushed bone. Had to, in fact, couldn't even replace it. It was crushed a bit. Then you got all this problem. You know, and then you got kids that she got a boy out of school because, you know, you got to do school at home now. You got all this extra burden that coming our way today. Uh, we got uh, Mrs. Wright has gone through the COVID thing at her home. Miserable. Uh, the situation with my friend uh, Rick here and all the surgeries you've had to go through. I don't, I, I am not worthy. I mean, the man has just gone through so much. How many surgeries have you had? I figured you had more than that. I figured you've had. I mean, since this all started. Yeah, that's plenty. Uh, I remember Marvy Haynes having over 600 surgeries. I, I'm telling you, uh, it's out there. The burden, the labor, is the heavy laden burden. Come unto me, all ye that are burdened and heavy laden. Come unto me. Well, so we always know right off the bat where the answer is, right? Come unto me. There's your answer. So we have a lot of people out there. Burdens of life are many and varied. There's people right now that call the church nearly every day needing help. Do you believe that? I'm a soft touch. You know. I was sitting at the thing the other day and, and I, was, I saw this uh, person coming to the church and I said, I bet she needs money. 
I said to myself. He comes in, he says, are you, uh, are you somebody that I can talk to about some help? I said, no, he's not here. <laughs> no, I said, no, sir. I said, uh, yeah, I'm the one you want to talk to. Well, I don't have nothing. I said, how come? Things ain't gone my way. I said, if you're, are you a Christian? I don't know. And that means you're probably not. You know. Well, he said, I really didn't come to get preached to. I really need to come to get help. Well, I said, you come here, you get preached to before you ever get any help. The best help you can ever get is pre being preached to. And uh, I'm going to tell you that right now. He said, well, he said, I just ran out of gas. I said, you did. He said, well, I, I said, well, I'll help you. I'll fill your tank up. That's the best I can do for you. I said, there's nobody here that I can talk to about giving you money that I can fill your tank up. Well, I sure would appreciate it. But I said, I won't fill your tank up unless you read this. <laughs> I said, that's the deal. Okay, I'll read it. Be glad to. I want you to read it right here so I can see you reading it. <laughs> he says, that's the deal. Wasn't that big? It was a little funny, you know, smiley face track. Wasn't that big of a deal? But uh, he told me when he was young that he had professed Christ and he went to church family and his family all went to church and they all got out of church. And that man had a burden. Nothing was going right for him. By the way, if you don't serve God, nothing's going to go right for you. I I'm telling you. People can talk about it. You're going to lose if you don't get, if, it may not be necessarily financially, but I'm talking about mentally. I mean, Heart. Things ain't going to go right. Uh, a lot of problems out there. Some groan under the, distress, the distresses of life. Poverty calls many to groan. Jeremiah 38, 41 says, Who provideth for the raven his food? Let me tell you what. People who are in dire need are not today as smart as a raven. A raven knows where he needs to go. Now, this man said to me when he was here, he said, I have watched this church ever since. I have been young. I said, you know, I have too. I said, you know, the difference between you and me is I've watched it from the inside. Amen. And you've watched it from the outside. Yeah. Is there a difference? Amen. There's a world real difference. We've got the COVID-19 thing. That's a big deal, okay? It's affected everything in this country. History will tell, I don't know what, but it will tell something down the road about the COVID-19. I question whether or not anything will ever be the same as it once was. I question it. I'm not saying it won't. I question it. Because I don't think this new administration wants us to be anything but controlled. That's what I think. And I may be wrong. Been wrong before. There's a temptation that's out there today. Did you, can you believe that robberies are up? <laughs> can you believe that? Yeah. Um, all kinds of murder, suicides, all up. I mean, the, the temptation is out there to do a lot of things. Um, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you're able. Now, people are wanting to give up like never before. Churches are selling their buildings for heaven's sakes. Three of them here just in the, in the local area. Churches are closing down the doors. A lady stands up in the middle of a crowded Walmart and cusses the church for having services. <laughs> it don't make sense. Now listen to me. There's people out there that have COVID-19 that don't even know they had COVID-19. Right. They walk by you, mingle with you. They don't even know you. they got it. 
They have no symptoms of it. It's out there. It's a real problem. So they say, well, you have doctors. I mean, I just listened to one last night from Stanford. They said, masks do absolutely no good. Then you have doctors that say you have to have them. Who do you believe? Well, I'm just old-fashioned guy. Like I said the other day, I wear a mask wherever I'm asked to wear one. And uh, I have 50,000 of them. You know why I have so many of them? Because of the inconsistency. I'm used to not wearing one. Then I go someplace that you got to wear one. I forget to take one. Then they give you one. I have been the giver. I mean, the receiver of many gifts this Christmas time. And they're all masks. <laughs> and uh, it's crazy out there. I don't know. And you don't know. And don't you tell me you know. Because you don't know. Because the smartest brains in this country don't know. And they'll say they don't know. So don't you tell me you know, because I don't know. I just know that I have a God in whom I trust. The temptations are out there to do a lot of things. Lazy preachers have all are, are lo excited about not having services. You say there's no such thing. <laughs> yeah. I had every December the 15th, my birthday. December the 15th, Brother Bob Adrian, pastor of the Liberty Baptist Church, and I have lunch together every year. He buys my lunch, I buy his. Every year. We laugh. If you don't know anything about the Adrians, there's Adrians everywhere. There's about 50 Adrian preachers, if you don't know that. And Bob and I talk. And he says, you know what bothers me, Brother Sandy? I said, what? He said, all the preachers that can't wait to dismiss the services. Whoa. That's strange to me. You know me, I don't ever want to dismiss them. I have to bite my fingers to dismiss them. But then on the other hand, I, I realize it's the right thing to do sometimes. But the temptations are out there. The temptations to get lazy. Do you think we have a lazy world today? Yes. Mm -hmm. I do too. Some are burdened with sin. There's a lot of that out there today. Robberies are up. Drive-by shootings are up. Muggings are up. It's Christmas time, and sin abounds. And the reason it is bound, because this country that God is judging, by the way, has forgot that Jesus is the reason for the season. A long time ago, not just this year. And by a long time ago, commercializing Christmas. It is easier for people to laugh and mock at Christians today. And Christmas. Crosses. How about the vandalism of the lights on people's homes? It is up like never before. People mocking the spirit of Christmas. Well, some are burdened with all kinds of things, but God has uh, relief for burdens, don't you think? How many of you guys remember that? Uh, what, was it, uh, what was it? You dropped that little pill in the water. Fizz, fizz, oh, what a relief it is. Remember that? That's it, Alka-Seltzer. Remember that? <laughs> fizz, fizz, oh, what a relief it is. <laughs> Bing, you drink it down. I couldn't stand that stuff. It was of the devil, wasn't it? <laughs> but I drank a lot of it. Now, I've got some stuff that is exactly 15 times worse than that. And you know how, you know, they say that you lose your taste if you get COVID. I'll tell you what, I got some stuff, buddy. If you can't taste it, you've got COVID. <laughs> I'll personally guarantee you that because it is the nastiest. 
ungodliest tasted stuff I have ever. Ch Brian Childs gave that to me. He said, Brother Steve, I'll guarantee you, this will heal anything you got. And the first took a <laughs> nasty. I get up every morning, hold my nose, shut my eyes, and drop that stuff in my mouth and swallow as fast as I can. <laughs> nasty. I'm telling you, I've never tasted anything nastier than that. Nothing you ever can imagine tastes worse than what I just told you about. I take it every day. <laughs> It helps me with my throat, basically. You know, helps me with my throat. I, I talk a lot. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> uh, but you know, God, he offers a pardon that will remove the sin and guilt in your life. You see, I always love the word pardon because, see, I learned it a long time ago that Sandy Seba, in the midst of my trials and, and miseries of a teenage boy who was in trouble all the time, finally got pardoned on March the 3rd, 1963. Amen. So I learned that word pardon. Now, Mrs. Um, the ladies here, may I, I want to talk to you ladies that sing. All you ladies that sing and sing. Uh, Mrs. Garrett and Mrs. Uh, Pettit and uh, Belinda, Belinda and Katie, uh, all those people that sing, I'm sure I'm missing some. But Mrs. Um, Ruff, she, she's from the old, old school. You all sit down and talk to her sometimes. Mrs. Ruff is a graduate of Baptist Bible College in Springfield. Her dad was an old-fashioned, old-fashioned, old-fashioned. Did I say old-fashioned? Baptist. But Mrs. Ruff sings a song that I love. Of course, some of you others have sing it too, probably. It is, it is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he can do for you. You see, I'm going to tell you, there was a lady that lived across the street from me in, on Dodgen Street in Independence, Missouri, when I was a boy growing up. And she made the statement, Sandy Seba is doomed for hell. I might have said that before, but that's, that's what she said about me. I heard that. And I got pardoned in 1963. Amen. And it is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others. Amen. He can do for you. All the kids I go to school with can't believe. Can't believe. I went to a reunion by myself one time. Debbie didn't want to go. I went over there and I was, uh, the, lady, the ladies for some reason were going to go one place and all the guys were going to go another place. But as I was walking toward my where I was supposed to go, a bunch of girls yelled at me. said, Sandy, come here. Now, they were girls when I knew them. <laughs> you understand? They didn't look the same. You know what I mean, Brother McGuire? They were 50 years, 55 years different. You know, and it's true. You shall be changed. Well, anyway, when I went over there, they said, we want to ask you a question, Sandy. And I, I said, first of all, I was surprised they even recognized me. You know. And they said, we can't believe you're a pastor. I says, uh, there's a lot of people who can't believe that. And uh, he says, well, tell me, how did God talk to you? <laughs> Has to be a woman say that to you, okay? You know, has to be a, a woman. And I go, well, I said, I looked at the life I was living. I looked I, I, that I lived. I looked at the life I was now living, and I liked the life that I was now living better than I liked the life that I lived. So therefore, I figured if God see, because I was born the way I was born, I never did feel like ever that that. Uh, that God called me to the ministry, I always say that I volunteered. That's what I've always said. 
There's two ways you can join the army. You can get drafted or you can enlist. I just enlisted. I said, Lord, you need some help? I'm willing to help you. Whatever you want me to do. And by the way, it was not pastoring that I had in my mind. And she says, you, you didn't feel no extra. I can't remember this one, the lady's name. But you didn't feel no something speaking to you? Uh, not verbally. No. I said, I felt a tug at my heart to help the God who loved me enough to send his son to die for me. I says, I wanted to help him. And that's what I've been trying to do. I'm just helping out. I'm just helping here. I told them I'd help them here until they found somebody. They haven't found anybody yet. They're still looking. They better find somebody pretty soon. That's all I can tell you. (laughs) I'm getting old. But God offers relief from your burdens. He offers a pardon that will remove the sin and guilt. Jeremiah 31, 34 says, I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. You just think about that verse. You go home, if there's one verse you think about when you go home tonight, think about that one. I will forgive their sin. I mean, I will forgive their iniquity and I will remove and I will remember, I will remember, I will remember their sin no more. Do you think about that? I'll remember their sin no more. Is that a good deal? Well, that should, should help you. Now, I don't know what to expect in the next few years, do you? I've heard a lot of stuff. Well, whether or not you hear a lot of stuff and it, and, and it comes to fruitation, I don't know. But I've heard a lot of stuff. I heard they're going to come and get your guns. That will be a mistake. Amen. But <clears throat> maybe they won't. Maybe that's just talk. I heard that they want to add nine justices to the Supreme Court. Did you hear that? called padding the court we got nine on the court they want to add nine more they want to add nine liberals so they don't never lose a case and they can do that if the senate votes them in now that's why this georgia race is so big because if they if they democrats win both of those down there it's a 50 50 court and guess who breaks the tie harris harris It's all working in their favor. I'm going to tell you what I think. You may not believe what I'm going to tell you, but here's what I think. There's not one person, a man or woman in this room, don't believe in the prayer and that God blessed us and helped us because no one ever believed in 2016 that Donald Trump would ever win the presidency. I believe God gave us four years to get our act together, and we didn't do it. And how I know that is because all all the cheating all the conniving, all the press problems that we're having, all this stuff, I mean, the press turns their back on anything a Democrat does. I'm not stupid. I've been reading the news and reading uh, for 60 years. Not one mention of what Mr. Biden's son did over there in China. If a Republican had done that, he had been in jail two days after it was brought out. They let it alone and didn't report it because God says, I'm not going to let the press report it. Because Christian, you didn't do your job. We should have flooded this country four years ago with the gospel and we should have knocked on everybody's door and if we loved our country enough. But you know what we think? Americans think this, it'll all pass. Everything will get better. You think it will? I got a feeling it's going to get worse, don't you? Yeah. Let me ask you this one. Let me go on record as saying, I pray to God I am wrong. I want to be wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It wax worse and worse and worse. Yeah. So we didn't expect it. 
Amen? Yeah. I had a guy tell me one time, well, America. I said, America is not found in biblical prophecy. I've had people tell me they try to get little things. Oh, well, um, so, well, well, so, so, so uh, what, if we, what if we all of a sudden decide to split and uh, succeed the union and we become a little America? You know, maybe so. I don't think that's going to happen. But, but I'm just saying that but maybe that would be that little bit. But there's no American Bible prophecy because it's gone. And you're going to watch it go. You're going to watch it go. Uh, or at least you're going to see the beginnings of it anyway. I don't know if you'll see it completely. All right, one other verse here real quick I want you to think about. God offers relief from your burdens. He offers purity of heart to everyone. Leviticus 19.2 Ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord God, am holy. Matthew 28.20 20, Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Christ says this, be content with such things as you have, for he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So Christian, we have promises Amen. for us. But we're going to have to ride the wave of the judgment of God. And we'll get... They'll come after us. Don't you think? Yeah. They'll come after us. Military right now, my sons are in the military. Okay. David is a senior master sergeant in the Air Force. He works for the NSA, National Security Agency. Here's what he said. He can't tell you nothing. He can't tell you nothing, but here's what he said. Tell people... Dad, to get their house in order. That's what he said. Exact words he told me. Tell your people, Dad, to get their house in order. He knows things that he can't say. Right. Rodney just came back from one solid week of training for the National Guard. He has his own command. He had his own troops down there in a place down in Kansas getting ready for trouble in Kansas. He said, Dad, the only thing I can tell you, it's not going to be pretty. And you'll watch one step at a time going. But you know what? Aren't you glad? Now this is Christmas time, you guys. This is the time we're supposed to be rejoicing and singing and having a great time. This is a time when we say, and I do, I'm having a good time. I'm having a great time. I, don't, I haven't got a Christmas tree up yet. First time in the, for, since I've been married, I haven't had a Christmas tree. Since I can remember, I haven't had a Christmas tree up before my birthday. But I got a granddaughter or two going to come over, I think, and help us put up the Christmas tree here pretty soon. But we're going to have it up for a few days anyway. It bugs Max. That's why I haven't put it up so quick. Max don't like my Christmas tree. Brother McGua, you know, my dog, he don't like it. He, he want, he want, we have to put the bulbs higher so he won't bam the bulbs. Max is that way. Huh? If I kicked it, Brother McGill, <clears throat> I got to clarify this with you, my friend. If I kick Max outside, my wife would kick me outside. It's too cold for me to get kicked outside. And Max, Max, in case you don't know Max, Max runs the show. And my wife's fault. <laughs> no. <laughs> you ain't got no dogs, do you, Brother McGill? You want one? You want one? I just thought I'd ask. Oh, I just thought I'd ask you. you I, in other words, if I was to bring you over a big box wrapped up with Christmas presents and inside, we would we'd still be friends, wouldn't we? 
<laughs> I, I don't want to get broke with you and no dog for Christmas. I'll tell you that. But I'm telling you, do you agree with me that we're in trouble? Is gas prices going to go up? They already are. Groceries going to get higher? A lot of trouble coming our way. And everywhere you go, somebody's breaking into some elderly person's home and committing murder. Yeah. It's like never before. It's a plague. Well, I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm just telling you that Jesus has come. Jesus has come, was born in a manger, went to the cross and died for our sins and is coming back. No matter what your burden is, cast your burden upon him for he cared for you. Right. Father, we love you. Thank you for the blessings of life and all that you do for us. We come here tonight to get, I didn't want to scare anybody. But I'm just saying the truth. The truth will set you free. And that's what you told us. So we're getting ready for Christmas to come along to rejoice in the very birth of Jesus Christ. The very, very, very thought of you loving us enough to caring enough for us to die for us should thrill our soul and take all the worries away. Because we, uh, you and me, Lord, we make up a majority. And I'm so glad that you love us. You've been good to this church. I thank you for the program last Wednesday, last Sunday night. I'm telling you, Lord, it was a blessing. These people, Jennifer and her crew and the choir and those that acted up there, I'm telling you, Lord, it was um, so, so delightful to my soul. Just made my night, made my week, made me laugh, made me enjoy the facts that God is so good to us. And with short time and few practices, they put on such a phenomenal program. Wow. Wow. What a bunch of good people. But Lord, may we stay together and love each other. May we go through this virus together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.